Thank you for watching James here, Firm the Disc in the Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about Spider-Man at E3. There was a big presentation on a number of things with the Sony PlayStation. There was also some extra videos still out. It was on, people were able to play it on the floor. And it was kind of one of the standout games of E3. Definitely the one I was, between that and Kingdom Hearts, that free, there was just a push between the two of them. Um, E3 as a whole was a bit of an odd thing. Um, kind of slightly different topic but there's a, there a lot announced but there wasn't really a lot announced either um spider-man 3 we knew beforehand it's coming out in september you know we're only about what three months away so it was they were very much showing off gameplay how it's running the, the spider sw you know swinging around and i have heard nothing but good things from everything i've watched and seen it just seems to be hitting that mark of this looks to be like this could be the one of the big epic games or it's definitely going to be the the disney video game of the year for us <laughs> well there's only two to pick from, exactly. so <laughs> <laughs> having said that yeah of course there's only two of them to pick from but this one does look like it's going to be a lot of fun uh they showed off you know the web swinging mechanics which is just a single button press which is Good. I know that they've had a, a version, yeah. one of the old Amazing Spider-Man tours, alternating triggers. This is I prefer the single button. The combat is very reminiscent of Batman Arkham series or the Assassin's Creed game, which is great. They showed off some of the, the technology things. I think there was one I was watching. Um, I want to say Treehouse, but I know that's the yeah. Nintendo <laughs> version of it. Anyway, the uh, where they were doing the talk after the yeah. E3 presentation and uh, he threw like a grenade web at the wall and then it shot out a web and grabbed someone and slammed him into the wall and I thought that was great. So they showed off a lot of really cool stuff. I'm super excited for the game. E3 came out and they did what they needed to with the title. Having said that, I do have a couple of concerns. Um, the main one being the city seems very empty. Um Obviously, when you're up high, yeah, that's yeah. just going to be the case. You're not interacting with people. But it seemed like there was a lot of space, just empty space, in between the various events that were going on around the city. I don't know if that was simply because it was the E3 demo and they wanted very distinct things and they didn't want people distracted by collectibles and side missions yeah. or whatever. But uh, I kind of hope that's the case. But they, there was definitely yeah. this feeling like... Uh, you need to get from here to here to here, and there's not much in between them. There is the one thing with those like um, collectibles and stuff, and I think we've got used to seeing it in games. But I actually would like to. I actually would prefer if collectibles are in chests or boxes or hidden somewhere, rather than a great big flashing logo in the middle of between two skyscrapers that you've got to swing through. Because it kind of pulls you out of the realism that you're actually, you know, that's not real. I mean, I know Spider-Man's not real, but it's that thing of when you have massive icons and orbs or things to collect, there's that thing of like, yeah, that's that's not really how it works in in anything. It's just like become a video game thing of... So I, I, I hope that they, it might actually be... They leave it open and things that you've got to collect are a little bit more realistic. Oh, I'm, I'm fine with that completely. I agree. There is something very odd about you know swinging between buildings and there is an oscorp logo right there or a spider serum or something yeah. like that um but having said that yeah i i still want there to be stuff to do yeah. in between you know whatnot or even as you're swinging along all of a sudden you just hear a woman yell out help help yeah. and you know you have to swing down and beat up the bad guy who's stealing her purse or you know what other mm. cliche thing superhero superheroes do or maybe maybe the old lady is beating up the the mugger and the mugger is calling for help yeah. <laughs> i don't know whichever i'm fine with either it's just that kind of thing of i think it i think they did a strong because i think there was a lot of talk before the game um before e3 of you know they they were not seen a lot of, pl of gameplay a lot of um big sites and stuff saying you know it's a game of they're doing it the the, the, the when you start hearing all the big players all talking about how much they enjoyed it and how it feels right and how, you know, they're excited for it, I kind of just kind of go, yeah, this is going to, this is one of PlayStation's big uh, hits. This is going to be one of their big pushes for the year. I mean, they only showed, what, four or five major games for the next 12 months plus, and Spider-Man was one of their key ones that they are pushing as a strong 
platform seller. Absolutely, and it's going to be uh, just a major game release for this entire year. I also like it's coming out in September, which means that there's plenty of time uh, for people who say maybe want to wait, get it around Black Friday or Christmas, because the price drops will happen well before then. I am a little concerned with its general release window, because there's actually quite a few games coming out. <laughs> Right around then. Uh, for myself personally, Dragon Quest XI is only a couple days before that. I know that's not your yeah. game. Yeah, JRPG. That's a straight up classic yeah. JRPG. Um, but then Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the week after that as yeah. well, which is, uh, I'm probably going to hold off on Shadow because I haven't finished Rise of the Tomb Raider yet, and I with the schedule coming up, I doubt I'll beat it. So it can wait. <clears throat> but I know there are people who will have a hard time picking between those and i know that those are the ones that i'm looking at and i i don't have the actual schedule in front of me i only yeah. have my schedule in front of me but there are other games coming in in that window world of warcraft has a major expansion coming out um in the same time frame i know that it's not the powerhouse it used to be but it's still uh, yeah. a pretty major thing so there's a lot coming out in yeah, that see, time my, period. yeah see my thought was going straight to um assassin's creed um the Odyssey one coming out October. So for me, I was like, going, oh, well, I've got a whole of September for Spider-Man. And then he said Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I go, oh, I forgot that one. That's another one. Right. And then it's going to be, you got Hitman 2. I got Red Dead Redemption. We've got uh, Super Smash Brothers. And yeah, so yeah, it's going to be, I mean, it's, it's looking like it's going to be a nice solid winter of games. And it's, it kind of feels like Spider-Man is almost like the start of the season. That's kind of, I, yeah. I think it, it, the start of the season is really going to depend on you know what you're in for. I think World of Warcraft in August is going to be the start for a lot of people. But yeah, between Dragon Quest Spider-Man and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, middle of September is really when the season kicks into high gear. So um, I know I've got a ton of games I need to, to just plow through before we get to this. Because once September hits, it's going to yeah. be all these yeah. games coming out. And they're going to be... Jeez, I need to get through the Kingdom Hearts games before that comes uh, out. And that's not even uh, coming out until January. I forgot, I forgot Kingdom Hearts 2 that I have to try and... Because I just ordered two new Switch games. <laughs> Toad Tracker and and Crash Bandicoot things. Of like, yeah, I might... Yeah, I might cancel one of them. Because I just remembered I need to finish off Kingdom Hearts 2. And if I don't get it done in July, then <laughs> that'll be it. It's just like, oh yes, there's a lot of stuff coming. Thing I think with like Spider Man of just it's it's gonna be a strong one. This I think this um E three really showed off Spider Man as being a very strong title, one of PlayStation's core cool ones for the year. And yeah, it definitely it, it, it E three definitely had a I think the Marvel guys really did were able to push that this was a very strong title and one to watch. Um it's just a it's that kind of weird thing. They were able to back it up, and I think that was definitely because there were little worries people were having beforehand of it being, you know, is it actually any good? Does it play all right? That's all seemed to have gone now. The story mode looks great. I mean, that trailer where you saw all the villains, that looked interesting, looked very well done. You know, it just looked, it just looks a lot of fun. It just looks like it's going to be um, a good, solid co uh, comic book caper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is probably the comic book game that we've been waiting a couple of years for at the very least um if not to back up batman arkham knight then perhaps a little bit farther back because arkham knight did have a lukewarm response I enjoyed that but i enjoyed that I, I enjoyed it but it did have a lukewarm response and uh you know i played it on pc which was not the ideal way to play that one yeah. um now we just gotta but, wait for but, whatever rocks are they're doing Huh? And now we're just going to wait to that? see what Rocksteady are doing because they've still not announced. We do. It. Yes, they it's, still haven't announced anything. So yeah. it's going to. I think Spider Man is going to be good. I think obviously, you know, we've got the collector's edition. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, I probably would just. I'm probably just going to just flat out just digital do it. I know you can get like the theme and stuff. Um, it's that thing of you know. There is going to be some extra DLC as well of some extra things, so which is pushing me slightly more towards digital because it's just easier. It's a little bit cheaper to get physical, but I always gets me with it's like it's like they're all like a pre-order now or just like, but I have to pay for it now up front 
three months before it comes out and I can digitally just buy it the day before or day before and it will download. There's, I don't qu quite get the point of digitally buying. They're not going to sell out. <laughs> it's just like, and it's not downloading until the week of the game. So I do, if you are digitally, it's like, at least with Hitman 2, you're at least getting something now you can play. You can kind of say that that's maybe not quite so bad, but... Um, yeah, that was the odd thing, but there's lots of different options and stuff. I mean, but it does look like it's going to be a pretty, or, and there's lots of costumes and extras and right. stuff. I think this one's going to be a, a top hit for the for the winter season. Yeah, and it's the costumes. I'm actually interested in because I have to admit that even though we've we've known about that costume for a while, the big white spider on his outfit really isn't doing it for me. So I'm looking forward to to popping them into a different outfit mm. as soon as I can, pretty yeah. much. Definitely looking good. Um, think, from, think from E3 as a whole. Um, lots of different presentations and stuff come in. Um, a few games caught my eye. Um, the new other big Sony one, which is like the Japanese um, yeah, thing. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that sucker punch of working on that. was something that's caught my eye. On a whole, nothing, there was not really a lot of surprises. I think those kind of days are long gone between leaks and companies. I'll be honest, Nintendo kind of slightly disappointed me because I'm going to get Smash. I've never played Smash, so 30 minutes on Smash seemed a little bit like... Um, is there anything else? I want something a bit bit more epic than this. Um, there wasn't really any big surprises from the Disney point side of things. More, Lots of Kingdom Hearts stuff, but we kind of did a lot of that last week. And that was it, really. There was no real... I didn't really leave thinking, okay, there's a lot of stuff here that's... Um, that we didn't already really know about. Uh, we knew about a lot of it. A lot of it was just additional details. The only game I can recall um, looking at and going, I did not know this game existed, and now I wish I knew more about it, was uh, The Legend of Zelda clone on, I guess it'll be PC and Xbox, called Tunic, which right. is an old-school Legend of Zelda-style game, but starring a fox and very stylized art style. I actually want to know more about that. And the other one was actually Starlink, which is a game we knew about. It, yeah. Like, nah, yeah. Nah, let's leave the toys <laughs> aside on this one. Um, it is the Skylanders Disney Infinity-esque game. They have confirmed that you don't actually have to buy the toys, that everything is yeah. uh, achievable in the game, so you don't have to worry about a closet full yeah. of figures that you're never going to touch again. Having said that, them announcing uh, the Star Fox edition for Nintendo Switch, I was like, I need that R wing. I, I want that R can't help. I'm going feel to get like that. The, the Star Fox announcement just pretty much just flooded everybody over to the to the Nintendo version. If you were on the fence, um, oh yeah, it's yeah it, that there definitely caught my eye. Yeah, Nintendo were a bit of an odd one. They, um, there wasn't really the trouble is with Nintendo is they could do a direct next week and announce a whole load of stuff because they don't do E3 the same way that every right. other company does. Um, I did think Microsoft had a very good um, showcase. I thought that their actual presentation was probably the best out of it. Half of the stuff is also on PlayStation 4. And, you know, they've announced, like, Ninja Theory, they, they who made Disney, helped make Disney Infinity, they're now owned by Microsoft. So that's always interesting to see what they're doing with that. Um, and they're definitely ramping up their what they're doing. I think they realise that they need a little bit more out there. Um, yeah, so I think Xbox did all right. Um, the PlayStation conference was actually with the Spider-Man stuff. I actually thought the conference itself was very bad. Um, it was very <sighs> badly. It was very. I mean, people saying, "Oh, well, it got you know." There was some people going, "Oh, it was the best show tonight." Take off some of the trailers. The actual presentation itself was poor. You know, it was not. That yeah, good. it did not come across like the biggest company in the world. That came across very weakish. And some of the games they showed off, like that Death Strand, it's like I don't get it. I'm not. Re and Last of Us, I haven't played the first one, so that was a bit lost on me. At least with Xbox, they kind of. I love the the fake fake out on the Gears of War Funko game, which kind that of that was odd. I love at least yeah, but they at least they knew what they were doing. They knew they were well, playing everybody. That's right. There was that Command and Conquer game yeah. that they they announced. I was watching that trailer. I'm like, this is Command and Conquer. Why have they not yeah. said it's Command and Conquer? And then they, oh yeah, it's Command and Conquer. And it was just like, 
But this isn't what we want. No. We don't want a mobile command and conquer. We want a proper one. Oh, that was, that was EA. That was EA. Company. That was EA. Yeah, no, yeah. that was not Microsoft or Sony. That was EA, yeah. and just like very tone deaf to what their audience wanted. Um, but if we're talking about the conferences themselves, like you mentioned, uh, yeah, the Sony one was cringy as heck. Again, we're not talking about the trailers. We're talking about yeah. the presentation with them doing their kind of like pundit political news style. Four people sitting at a table talking about stuff, and then I think as a whole, the presentation was a little bit fuzzy, but at least they had Spider Man in there, so that's kind of the major thing there. But anyway, guys, I'd love to know what you guys thought of the Spider Man um, presence at E3, and as E3 as a whole, I'd love to know what you guys think. Get in touch with us on social media or in the comments below. Find us over at DiscKingdom.com or the different platforms as well to follow us and keep up with the latest of what we're doing. James, where can you find you? I can find me at heroiclegacy.com. Okay. On that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Laters. Later.